Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel on this beautiful day. How are you guys and girls doing? Drop a like, subscribe if you like the content. Today's video is going to be about tile palettes and tile maps. And we're going to be making some cool maps and just explain how all this works and how you can use it for your game. So first things first, what is a tile palette? You might be wondering. Well, if you ever watched the Bob Ross video, you know, he's holding a palette in his left hand or whatever. And he has his brush and he's, you know, he's mixing colors. He's doing all that shit. And then he's painting the canvas. Now it works kind of the same way here. You create palettes with different sprites and different images. And then you use those on your canvas, which is your, well, it's called a grid here, but it's basically your tile map. So once we create these, you'll see a little bit how they stack up in the hierarchy tab and how they work together. It might look a little weird at first and a little complicated, but it's not, I promise. It's really self-explanatory and really easy to work with. Not everyone uses the tile map from Unity. Some people make their own tile map systems, but we're going to be using this since it's pretty easy and it's kind of optimized a little bit and it works really well with Unity anyway. So to start off, we're going to start by creating a palette since you need something to draw with before you start drawing on your tile map. So I'm going to go to my assets folder and I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder called tile map like that. And I'm going to go inside and create another folder called tile palettes. However you spell that, I think with one L. Hopefully you can see that. I can zoom in a little bit. So tile palettes and you just go in there. I'm just going to create a new folder in here as well. Call it basic. You will have different tile palettes. So it's a good idea to just sort them out and put them in different folders so you know what you're doing. So we have our basic folder here and we're going to create a new tile palette in here. So the way you create one is through going to window 2D tile palette. And that's how it's spelled. P-A-L-E-T-T-E. -E. Perfect. Once you do that, you'll get this nice little window out here. And this is basically showing me that I already have a little palette here. And this is something we're going to have to fix. So I'm going to first close this and go to assets, sunny land artwork, environment, tile set. I'm going to delete the palette that exists here. And all we have left is our sliced tile set here, which is the image itself. If I open that, I'll see the tiles here. Now we won't have any confusion. So I'm going to go back into my tile palettes map here or folder, sorry, and then go back to window 2D tile palette. And I shouldn't be seeing any palettes here now. So I'm just going to go ahead and click the drop down and hit create new palette. And I'm going to call this basic, basic, leave ev everything else as it is and just hit create. And then we'll ask you where you want to place it. So I'll place it in my basic folder. Select it and it creates a tile palette. Now it doesn't really have anything in there, but we'll keep this window open. Actually, we'll drag it to the right here. So I'll place it right here. And then I'm going to go ahead to my assets, Sunnyland, artwork, environment, tile set. And I'm going to drag this tile set in here. It doesn't really matter how you drag it. And then we're going to go back again to my tile map, tile palettes, basic, select that folder, and I'll create a bunch of stuff in here. So if I go ahead and go there again for the hundredth time, you'll see that it just sliced all of these things for me perfectly. And now I have a tile palette to play with here. I can zoom in the window, just investigate this a little bit. I'll make it bigger. And there's a lot of space in between these. There are ways to move these around within this editor, but I wouldn't do that just now since this does make sense to me. But sometimes if you have your own sprites, they might look weird. They might be placed in different locations. You can select them and cut and paste them and move them around here. But I'm not going to do that just now. You have to hit edit the tile palette first and then you can do all that stuff. But go ahead and check that out if you need to. But for this tutorial, you're not going to have to do that. So if we just go ahead and look at the controls here real quick, if you hover on them, you'll see what you can do. Once we create a grid here, you'll be able to use these. So you'll be able to select things, um, move stuff. You'll be able to select a box of different tiles and just move them around, paint. This will be our paint tool. And then you'll be able to fill an area using this. Select a tile, just like in paint or in Photoshop. When you select the color using the marquee select tool or the pick tool, erase, of course, you need to be able to erase and then flood fill. And we'll see all of these in action once we get started, but it's good to know that they're here. We don't have a target here yet. And here you'll see the current selected palette. And like I said, just now you can edit the palette itself using this button here. And we won't really talk about these things down here right now. We'll get back to that if it becomes relevant. But for now, we're good. Now the fun part begins. We're going to create a tile map. And for that, I'm going to have to just hide my sample level because I don't want to see this anymore. This does create 
a problem because we don't have anything but we're going to create a new level here from scratch really simple just the way it was almost but with a tile map instead so first things first i'm going to create the tile map so i'm going to go to 2d object tile map and just do a regular rectangular tile map now it's good if you keep your tile palette open here because we're going to be using that to draw soon and you'll see a nice little image appears on the screen where we can draw whatever we select so it's working for us right now but we're not going to do that just yet we're going to do a few more hierarchy things so first things first i'm going to click my tile map and just show you what this includes so you have a tile map component which we don't really need to talk about too much but it's good to know it's there and then you have their tile map renderer itself and here it kind of works like a sprite renderer you have your sort orders and everything and your modes which we don't really have to talk about just yet to keep it simple but we'll go ahead and add a sorting layer to tiles at least just so we have that just like we had before and we'll keep the order to zero i'm going to go ahead and rename my grid just now to map and instead of tile map i'm going to say tiles and if we look how i had it here i want to kind of keep the same type of structure so i'm going to copy my middle and place that in maps under map and the same for background so i'm going to go ahead and just do that like that and these should keep the same orders and sorting layers and everything just that we had before so that's perfect one more thing we're going to be working with later is a foreground tile map so you can have several tile maps just as you can have several tile palettes which is nothing weird this is going to be our tiles layer basically and then we're going to have one more for any foreground objects which won't have colliders and also one for background objects actually so that's going to be pretty fun but for now we'll just keep it to tiles now we have our background we have everything ready one thing you might want to do is to go into your camera or main camera and just check this out because your background transform isn't really the same anymore. So I'm going to just go ahead and do that just to be sure. Drag the new ones in there and just test run this just to see that at least things are following. Well, just died. So. <laughs> So that looks good. Now we're going to try to design the map just the way it was. And then we're going to test this out. It doesn't have to be exactly like it was, but I'll select what the regular ground tile here. And I'm going to draw some ground just like we had before. Maybe not exactly, but kind of. I'm going to make it a little thicker too, like that. Put some style into it, like that. So now we have something which resembles ground. And if I click these objects here in my tile map, tile palette's basic, I'll see that there is a collider type. Now this collider type, we can set to none, grid or sprite. I'll keep it to sprite. So it will collide depending on the sprite. Now we don't really have a collider set here. So if I run this, nothing's going to happen. What we want to do is we want to create some colliders for this. I'm going to select my tiles here and I'm going to add a component. Now this isn't a box collider. It's a tile map collider 2D. So you just search for tile map and it should show up. Select that and it's going to create colliders for basically everything. If I run this now, it's going to, well, it's going to collide and we'll be able to move around, but it's not working nicely. Why is that? Because I need to go ahead here into my tiles and set the layer to tiles. And I'll go ahead and set this to static while I can. If I run this now, it works just like it did before. Well, basically like it did before. It's a little weird, but we're going to create a composite collider. So it's going to be a little nicer. So let's go back to the inspector, click our tiles object and add another component and call it a composite collider 2d and i'm going to click used by composite in the tile map collider 2d which we created before like that and then we'll have a rigid body here as well if you remember we'll set that to static and then we'll go to our composite collider and just check that everything is okay and it looks fine and now if i run this it's going to work like it did before great now that we have the collider running and everything running now we can create tiles much more easily so i'm just going to go ahead here and create another platform up here like that and i'll create one a little higher up here like that and then i'll run this again and we can test this and it's working just like we want to so it's adding the colliders as composite colliders for all of our tiles Okay, so I just want to show an issue that we can get with foreground element. Now, usually in games, you want background, foreground, all kinds of stuff, different layers to make it seem like there's some depth and foreground elements and background elements can be really important. Now, if I go into my assets, tile map, tile palettes, basic, which we created, we'll have a few foreground elements that we can use. For example, this bush here. Now, this bush, if I render it, 
just like this here, a few bushes, what's going to happen is that the collider for these objects are going to be added and they won't be in front of our player like we want them to be. Now, I shouldn't be able to jump on this, so it looks really weird. Like I showed you before, you can click on one of these sprites and go into the inspector and you can change the collider type to whatever you want. There's another way to find it as well. If you don't want to use that way, you can click in the tile palette, the select tool and just select the object that you want to go to and then double click on that tile and it will just get you straight to wherever that is saved. And here we can edit it just the way we want to. Now we have two bush elements. I'll remove the collider for them both like this and I'll save that and you'll see they'll pop in and out. And then once their collider is to set to none and we run the game, you'll see that at least we don't collide with them, but they're not in front of our player. And that's why usually you have a tile map for your tiles, which are behind your player. Then you have your background tiles, which are even further back. And then you have your foreground tiles, like the bushes and everything, all the trees and stuff that you want in the foreground, just to make it look cool. But for us right now, we only have one tile map, and that's something we're going to tackle in the next video. So for this video, I just want to show you the issue that arises from trying to do this. But we're going to leave the collider set to none here for the foreground elements. Now I also want to show you the tile palette tools that there are. Now select already showed you. You can select the tile that you want to see in the inspector. The paintbrush you've seen, we can paint easily. So I'm going to go over here and paint another section and I'm going to use these tools. Now the next one is a filled box. So I'm going to fill a little bit here. So you just left click and drag after you select the tile that you want. So that's the way you can fill a huge area pretty quickly. And then you have this selection tool here or the picker tool. And there are, hot, there are hot keys as well for these. So I for this one in specific. So I'm going to hit I and click that and it'll select that for me. And I'll do the same for this edge one here and do the same for this side. Whoops. We'll show how to fix that in just a second. Go ahead and do that. Get your edges right. So I'm just hitting I and selecting the tile that I want. Now I want to erase something. I'll hit the D tool and then just click left click and drag to erase. And then you have the fill tool. Now the fill tool I'll show you in this section as well. If you remove this and you have tiles all around the section, you can fill it with whatever you select. So I'll select this middle tile again and I'll just fill the whole area. And that's also a really quick way to paint things quickly. Now there's something called auto tiling, which helps with this kind of stuff. So while you're drawing, it will just automatically make things just the way they're supposed to be, depending on the rules you set for it, which we're going to be talking about that later as well. But for now, I think this is more than enough to draw things really quickly and easily. It doesn't really, it really comes with a lot of tools to make your life a little easier. And if you look here now, once we created our tile map, the selection one, the selection drop down popped up and it has the tiles in it. So once we create more tile maps, you can just select different tile maps here to, to render on, or you can select them from the hierarchy tab. So I'm just going to save my scene and we're just going to do a few cleanup things. One thing that's annoying me is if I select my main camera and go down to the camera controller script, I'll set this to 0.5 for the move scale factor for the middle ground, just so I can see it moving once I'm running the game, because that's been annoying me a little bit. One is a really dumb default value for this. So go ahead and set that to 0.5. And then we're going to increase the camera size a little bit. I think it's a little too small. So I'm going to set that to six and go ahead and save that. And now you'll see that the background is a little messed up, but we can fix that quickly. So you just select the background. I think the constraint proportions is clicked already. So I'm going to leave that. I'm going to set this to six just so it covers all of my camera. And if you want to check that, just go ahead to game and see that it's actually covering everything. And you can set the scale to one and just see how that'll look. Now we'll see a little more of the world as we're playing. I think it was a little bit too zoomed in. Once that's done, we want to test the players jumping out as well. So I'll hit or click on my player in the tab hierarchy tab and go down here and set max jump count to two and jump force to 15 and just save the scene. And that's a little bit of cleanup done. Now, if I run this as a final demo, you'll see that it looks a little better. I didn't remove these tiles here, but we'll be doing that later once we create the tile foreground tiles tile map. And if you notice, you'll see some tearing between the tiles as well. I'll present a fix for that in the next video as well. It's really easy to do. It's a really nice quick fix. 
So don't worry about that. I know a lot of tile maps in games contain all this kind of tearing and stuff, but I've been struggling with that myself, working with the SFML stuff, but here it's really easy to fix. And we'll be doing that in the next video and a lot more. So thank you for watching this one. Hopefully you learned a lot. Hopefully you're having fun with these series. I know it's new and it's fresh and it's not C++, but I'm still grateful for all of you watching these and dropping likes and subscribing. Go ahead and do that. It really helps me out. And I can't wait to release more of these videos for you guys. It's really fun for me to do as well. So take care and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.